Welcome to the SharePoint PMP short video. This time we have a look on how to update your SharePoint framework solution and all of your WebPath instances which have been deployed within your tenant using that uh, solution or the web parts in included in the SharePoint framework solution. So let's actually get on going on this one. So what we have here is an existing solution uh, which I just created uh, and this is uh, basically the out-of-the-box uh, getting started web part solution. So what you get out of the, the Yeoman templates if you generate the solution. And what we actually want to do is quickly do a more small modification here. So let me actually update that theme so you can actually see that I'm not uh, or uh, the changes what we're doing uh, as part of the update. So I'm updating this uh, theming color to green dark and at this point uh, we're ready to test that the web part is working properly so let me flip back on my command line and we can do a call observe um, and double check how the web part is looking before we get it deployed on the SharePoint online. So there we go, we're starting our uh, local host, uh, we're able to see then uh, the local workbench to start and if I put my web part on a page we can see that the background color is green and the button is blue. And we're going to play around with the theming so you can see um, how the updates are getting reflected within the pages within the site. Good, so how do we actually make this uh, update happen? So. What, about, what I have here is a uh, random developer tenant and what I've configured here already is that I have a CDN folder in the root of my tenant. So this is going to act as my Office 365 public CDN location. So I'm going to serve my static files, not the content, just static files through the CDN. Uh, and I've already created the folder here, uh, which is going to host my JSON manifest file and also the JavaScript files uh, for my web part. So how do we actually make this then happen? So how do, what do we need to do now uh, to get the first version out in the SharePoint Online uh, within the site as well? So first of all, let's get back on my uh, structure or the uh, solution and let's extend the config folder and then go to the Fright Manifest at JSON. So this is where we define our CDN URL. So I'm going to update that URL and because it's a public CDN configured in my Office 365 at tenant, uh, it's going to have the public CDN prefix and then my tenant name and then the location to the folder, which was the location what you saw within my tenant. Good. So now our basic setup is essentially done. Uh, and now we need to start packaging our solution uh, for deployment. So let's flip back on my command line. Let's uh, stop uh, that call observe. Let's do some cleanup and let's do call up just a ship. So we essentially uh, make the solution ready. It's essentially the same as call up bundle ship. Uh, so we make our solution ready for packaging. And here we go, we're actually having that uh, solution ready uh, to be getting packaged. The following step is to run uh, gallop uh, package solution and does that ship. And this is going to then essentially take the URL from the right manifest and update that accordingly uh, to the manifest file and package that to the SPPKG uh, for a package. So let's have a look on that one. So how do I confirm that I'm ready to go, that my configurations are ready? Um, not sure if you noticed, uh, there was a SharePoint folder created automatically uh, within the folder structure. And in here, if you extend the debug folder, you can actually see all of the assets which are getting packaged on the SPPKG file, uh, which is the solution package file. And in here, if I extend this one, I can actually see the web part manifest uh, and the content. And we can see that the uh, internal module base URL is pointing to that CDN URL, which was updated to the right manifest JSON. So this way we know that we are actually configuring this properly and we're pretty, pretty much ready to go to deploy the initial version. So two things have to happen. So first of all, uh, we can, uh, well, we can do these steps uh, in either, either order, order. So let's actually go back on our site and there's our CDN web part location. So we need to get the assets here. So the JavaScript files and everything else in here. And what are those files? So let me actually go to my folder structure. So this is where I actually created the solution. And then I'm going to extend uh, the temp folder. And then we have a deploy folder here. And these are the assets which I need to get to the CDN. So three assets in this case, uh, because it's a relatively simple web part. So I'm going to track and drop those to be available within the CDN. And there we go. Now our CDN is essentially uh, ready to go and we're able to start moving. Good. Now, 
What's going to happen next uh, is that we need to get uh, the AMP file to be, get debugged on the app catalog. So let me actually go here uh, to the folder structure and go back on the root of the of the solution in the SharePoint folder solution. We're going to find the SPPKG file. So I'm going to track and drop SPPKG file, put it in the app catalog uh, within my tenant. And this means that essentially now the solution is then available uh, within the site when the uploading is completed and I confirm that this is fine to get actually installed within my tenant. So this is a tenant admin operator operation or if tenant admin has given permissions for somebody else to access the app catalog to deploy the assets. And as you can see the, the URL is pointing to our CDN URL. So let's click deploy. So now we're ready to go with the initial version of the solution. So let's double check that it's working properly. So here we go. Uh, I have a classic theme site which is using the modern pages. So I'm going to actually create or install the uh, solution to the site. So let's go in here and add a new app. So adding an app from my catalog, I can see that app being available from a catalog and clicking that one and that's then getting this installed on the site. So now this section uh, might take a while. It slightly depends how the time jobs are getting executed on the server side, but it shouldn't take too long. And we're looking into making this faster in the future as well. And there we go. That was super fast with the one refresh. So our VP update as client side solution has been deployed to this particular uh, site. Now, now we can actually use this web part. So let's add a page on a site. Let's call this uh, page, for example, update uh, update uh, demo and I'm going to add that instance uh, of the web part to the site. So update demo and there we go. We can see that the web part is uh, green with the blue uh, button. So all working and as you can see I'm just jumping in the back on my command line. We're not hosting that from localhost. We're hosting that actually from the CDN. So let's save that one uh, so the web part is ready. Obviously, I could create additional pages and we could have multiple instances of this web part across the tenant in, in the thousands of site collections and all of that. And now the question goes, OK, now I need to update this. So I need to do modifications on this web part. How do I make sure that all of these instances which are available from the from the sites are getting reflected by that update? So let's first do the update. So I'm going to move back into Visual Studio Code. Uh, let's actually close uh, uh, the manifest. Uh, that's the right manifest JSON. We don't need to update that. That is correct. But there's our web part code. So let's slightly modify this. I'm going to just update the theme color uh, from green to red. So you can actually see the change being reflected whenever the update is uh, fully completed. And again, we need to package the solution. So essentially, let's go to the command line. Let's run gallop uh, does that ship. So that's going to again repackage the solution. And then gallop uh, package uh, gallop package solution. There we go. Uh, package solution and does that ship as well. So we're getting a new version of the solution being created. Now, let's actually move into the folders and have a look what actually happened. And this is now the important thing to realize. So let me go back on my uh, root of the folder structure, temp, and then deploy folder. And what's now interesting is that, as you can see, I have now four individual uh, files here. So I used to have three. And the reason for that one is that when we do the uh, uh, new packaging, uh, we're actually getting a new version of the of the JS uh, file being reflected. So there is a new file being uh, created. And as you can see, that one is the latest version and that one is the old version. So we are essentially creating a new JavaScript file. And one of the reasons why we do this is that we make sure that whenever you update your web parts um, and instances, it has a different URL. So the client side caching and all of that in a browser do not affect uh, on this update and you will get served by the latest version of the web part. Good. So now we need to update these fellows to our CDN and our CDN uh, is in our web part uh, in our tenant. So let's actually go to the CDN location. Here we go. There's the three files and I'm going to track and drop all of those four files in. Um, I don't want to actually get rid of any of the existing files. I can just uh, uh, well, overwrite these files and confirm the overriding in here. 
whenever we actually get stuff. There we go. So we can actually do a replace, a replace and replace. So there we go. Uh, we can see that the update, uh, the modified uh, time has been updated for all of this a few seconds ago. Uh, so, uh, and let me actually reload. So we're able to see that all of the four files are correctly available. There we go. We have four files. So what right now happened uh, is that if we go back on the uh, on the page and if I refresh, this instance is still referencing the old version of the JavaScript because the JavaScript file name has been changed for the new version. So the change is not yet reflected. And even though we would override the existing JavaScript file, there would be client-side caching. So that would not be actually that optimal. So the next step, what we need to do uh, is to ensure that we deploy uh, the new version of the app uh, in the app catalog. So let's actually do that. So let me go back on my file system. Let's go back on uh, the SharePoint folder solution. And there's my new version, which was just created and drag and drop that in, replace the existing version of the web part. And there we go. We are, we have a new version available uh, from the site. And it is asking me to confirm that trust operation. Yes, we do trust that. And there we go. Now we have a new version available in the app catalog. So at this point, all of the instances of that client side web part are being reflected. It's because in the page, we're referencing that solution package from app catalog. So when we're rendering the page, the page rendering engine is realizing that, hey, there's a client side web part available. This web part, the manifest is in the app catalog. I'm going to reference the JavaScript files, which are uh, mentioned in the manifest, manifest section. And voila, we, uh, the changes are being reflected on a site. Now, key point to remember here, we were not uh, forced to update uh, or do any operations in a site level for that particular solution. And there's two uh, there's one exception on this one. The reason why this, this, uh, this was not required in this case is that this particular solution package do, does not deploy any feature framework specific definitions, like so let's say lists and sites and fields, uh, lists and fields and content types and all of that. Um, so we can update the solution across all of the instances within a tenant just by uploading the latest versions to be available. If that solution package would contain feature framework definitions, we would actually explicitly have to upgrade that solution package to the latest version so that the possible upgrade definitions in feature framework in the solution package would be reflected on the site as well. But like mentioned, if your solution does not contain uh, any of those feature framework definitions, your changes are immediately reflected uh, across all of the sites um, getting deployed. And that still applies in the feature framework scenario. You, the JavaScript changes would be reflected automatically, but the actual upgrade operation, um, which would theoretically, for example, introduce a field or a new content time, that would only be reflected when you do an explicit upgrade on a site uh, level. And that's it uh, for this BMP short video. Hopefully this clarifies how the upgrade model works within the client side uh, web part or SharePoint framework solutions in general. Thank you.